Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of the Diligent Endeavours podcast. And in this episode, I will be talking about rent to rent and teaching you some things which most people don't teach. Let's get into it. So, what is rent to rent? Rent to rent is not subletting. Most people think that rent to rent is subletting. Let's go through why that's wrong. Subletting is when a property is taken out on an assured shorthold tenancy agreement and then relet on an assured shorthold tenancy agreement. That's not what rent to rent is. The correct agreements are a management agreement or a profit share agreement. Those are the typical agreements used. Um, The management agreement is the same one which a letting agent would use with a landlord. Do not secure a house on an AST and then let it out again. That is subletting. In this video, we are going to be talking about HMOs in particular. However, you could do rent to rent on anything you wanted to. A boat, a caravan, a phone, a car, um, uh, serviced accommodation for short term holiday lets. But in this video, we're going to focus on houses in mo- of multiple occupation HMOs. Now, let's get the boring stuff out the way, but it is the legal stuff, the compliance. You can see here I've abbreviated and then given you the breakdown. So you need public liability, professional indemnity, employer's liability, insurance. You need to be registered with the ICO and follow the guidelines which is the Information Commissioner's Office, which is all about GDPR and holding people's data. RentSmart Wales. Now, that's only if you're in Wales. Visit their website. You'll need to register as a licensed agent. Client money protection. That will be part of the compliance. PRS or TPO. Now, that is the Property Redress Scheme or the Property Ombudsman. That is for a for the complaints procedure so make sure that you read up on those so there are more elements of compliance every council will have a hmo amenities or hmo standards document and you should read this become very familiar with it when you're viewing hmos next there is even more compliance and i just want to say HMOs, especially rent to rent HMOs, are seen as a starter strategy for people just starting out in property because there is a low price point, entry point to this strategy. I don't believe it's a starter strategy. And here's why. For the reason is for all of this compliance. You've got fire doors, smoke alarms, washing facilities, room sizes, door closures, fire blankets fire extinguishers, fire escape routes, fire exit signs, fire door signs, licensing, hinges, cooking facilities, kitchen space, smoke strips, emergency lighting, thumb turn locks, and and there's more. There's absolutely more. And you've got to adhere to all of these, all of these requirements. I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm saying, I'm, I'm telling you this to make you aware of just how much goes into actually setting up, being compliant, running a HMO. So you're all going to be asking, how do you find these properties? How do you find them? Now, these are the three most popular ways of finding a rent to rent HMO. And we're going to go through letters in particular. So we've got letters, letting agents, Oh, word of mouth. You might know someone who's got a HMO, they're struggling to fill the property or they've moved out of area. But for this instance, we're going to focus on letters. So you'll send the letter out and you'll start getting phone calls. And when your phone rings, usually you're going to answer it. But when the phone rings from a rent to rent HMO letter, you should never answer it. And I'll explain why. Typically, when you are out and about, picking the kids up from school, at a supermarket, your phone will ring. I guarantee you. You're never in a quiet location. You're never sitting down with a pen uh, pen and paper. You're never near your laptop. So let them leave a message. 
if they don't leave a message when you get back to your office, then give them a call. Now, on the phone call, you will be asked the same question. And this is the question. How much rent can you give me for my property? Now, I've put together a script for you and you need to follow it word by word. Here it goes. Unfortunately, we can't give out figures over the phone. This is because it depends on size, condition and location of the property. Does that sound fair enough? Now, no one's going to argue with the end part. Does that sound fair enough? So when they say, yeah, that sounds fair enough. The next thing that should come out of your mouth is great. When can we book a viewing? You go through that conversation and you get to the viewing. I've broken down the viewing into three parts. So here they are. First part, build rapport. So you need to find a commonality with the landlord. Build rapport. The next thing, bring bring forward the pain points. Now, let me explain this. There are many reasons why the landlord may have contacted you in relation to your letter. But here's some of the, the usual ones. They don't like letting agents. They've had bad experience with tenants in the past. They're getting old and they, they are just tired and they just do not want to do it anymore. They're, they're, they live too far. OK, so you need to find the reason, find that reason. Why are they contacting you? Once you've found the reason, the solution to their problem is standing right in front of them. It's you. So you need to reiterate what was in your letter. You know, what are the benefits of them working with you? Now. The negotiation stage the or closing the deal stage. I prefer to do this in person because I've done it quite a few times. However, you may want to go away, work your figures out and come back. Um, I wouldn't do it over email. I would try and either meet them at the property again or at very least give, give them a give them a phone call. You're going to need to get a feel for what they are looking to achieve from the property um, so that you know you're not that far away with your negotiation and your figures. Now, structuring the deal. There are three main ways of structuring a rent to rent deal. I'm going to go through all of them. The first one is guaranteed rent. Now, I don't like this term because nothing's guaranteed, but the first one is called guaranteed rent. Then we've got profit share model one and also profit share model two. And I'm going to go through these and break them down for you. So guaranteed rent for all of these examples. We are going to use a five bed HMO with the rooms at £500 per calendar month per room, which totals £2,500. We are also going to use the assumption that the bills are £500. That has probably gone up for a five bed now, but we're going to use it for the for this exercise. So with a four to six bed property, you use something called the 1.5 rule. So your profit is one and a half rooms per month. So for this example, the profit would be £750. And the bills are 500. Now, with guaranteed rent, you would have all of the bills in your name. So take that into account. Uh, and as you can see here, the rent to the landlord would be £1,250. Now, the trouble with guaranteed rent is if the property is empty, you still have to pay the landlord the guaranteed rent of £1,250. That can create a lot of pressure. I know one of my friends had um, guaranteed rent per month of about £35,000. That's a hell of a lot of pressure to have. So I don't particularly like guaranteed rent. I prefer profit share. Let's go through the different profit share models. So this is the profit share model one. So on this one, you are sharing profit from the last two rooms. OK, so room one, landlord gets £500. You get nothing all the way to room three. And then when it hits room four, the landlord gets 250 You get 250 Room five, landlord gets 250 You get 250 The bills remain in the landlord's name. You are not guaranteeing rent. You only get paid upon 
uh, room four and five being filled. If you do not fill room four or five, then you do not get paid. However, you also do not have any outlays. This one is profit share model two. So you can immediately see why I like this one. Uh, we've doubled the profit to a thousand pounds per calendar month. So everything after room one, which is covering the bills, is split 50 50. This one is is an exceptional exceptional method um we've got properties that we use this method on um yeah there's not a lot more i can say about it so which one would you use i really do not like the guaranteed rent method one nothing's guaranteed ever um and Two, it puts a lot of pressure on you, especially if you're trying to build a large portfolio of rent-to-rent -rent properties. Now, it's going to be a choice between profit share model one and profit share model two. Now, this is going to come down to the motivation of the landlord. We are not out to rip people off or be greedy. We are out to create win-win situations. And if the landlord's happy and you are happy, then maybe profit share model two is best. Um, if they're not that motivated or you know their expectation of what they were going to receive is a little bit different, then you might want to use profit share model one, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. However, be very careful. This is a disclaimer. Someone recently, not for rent to rent HMO letters, but for a, a marketing for property purchase letters, was has received an eighty thousand pound fine. Now that's an expensive letter. I need to make you aware of the legalities around this, or where to search for the legalities. So let's go through what happened. Um, someone received a letter and they complained to the advertising agency. Uh, the advertising agency found that it wasn't actually a letter. It was an it was marketing. So on the letter, it should have writ, writ, it should have read. This is an advertisement, but there's more. What you need to do if you're ever sending out direct mail letters is check the direct mailing database with the mail preference service. I would Google that if I was you. You do not want to get an £80,000 fine for sending a letter. There's a lot more to rent to rent HMOs than in this brief video. But I just thought it would be very, very good to give you an overview and give you a few truths in relation to rent to rent HMOs. There's some common misconceptions about them. Uh, people think that they're starter strategies. People think that they're easy. People think that the marketing method is the right way of doing it. Uh, be careful, proceed with caution, and I hope that you enjoyed this video.